Hi everybody, this is Briz Justine Duran and today is our schedule for module three. So module three is specifically to design to emphasize the importance of personal hygiene and grooming in the hospitality and tourism industry by identifying essential habits to characterize professionalism in the workplace. This module also presents the key etiquettes that students should be aware and practice in the workplace. So at the end of this module, students will identify good personal hygiene and grooming, create a good personal hygiene and grooming routine, practice work etiquette, good personal hygiene and grooming, and present oneself um, professionally in a video presentation expressing the importance of professionalism and good hygiene and grooming in tourism and hospitality industry. So the third module is titled as Am I Professional? In this chapter, these will be tackled. The definition of professionalism and essential practices, work etiquettes, personal hygiene, and personal grooming. Let us start with the term professionalism. So according, um, do you know that according to a study on career readiness, employers who were asked which traits, um, I mean, which traits they're looking for, newly graduates, majority of them, or 97.5% of the respondents, identified as professionalism or work ethic as highly important or absolutely essential. So that is just a little background of what I want to share with you guys. So you can give importance in developing and strengthening your professionalism, I mean, your professionalism starting now, even still as university students. Now, to read, the definition of professionalism is the conduct, behavior, and attitude of someone in a work or a business environment. A person doesn't have to work in a specific profession to demonstrate the important qualities and characteristics of a professional. Professionalism leads to workplace success, a strong, professionalist, um, a strong professional reputation, and a high level of work ethic and excellence. So yes, this is how professionalism is defined, but what's more important is how you're going to show professionalism, right? So that is the more practical question we, we have to ask about ourselves. So in practicing professional listen, I mean professionalism or having a good work ethic, these are some lists you can usually find. So in the 21st century setting in the workplace, some traits listed on here are more needed or more important than the others. So first, you have to be competent in what you do. And by, and by this, you will manifest being productive, managing your time efficiently, providing um, excellent work, and communicating clearly with your colleagues. Secondly, this is how you are perceived by professionals around you, especially in the workplace that you're assigned to, right? So this is why developing a professional image is important, having integrity and building positive relationships with your coworkers. And a bonus can be added to your professionalism if you're wanting to be seen as someone who, who they could rely on and eventually lead future tasks. So you can take more initiative with this if you like, be a problem sol solver, be a critical thinker and develop that self-awareness that you can become a leader someday because you have that potential. So I guess these things are highly important in demonstrating variety of professional qualities. Uh, it's obviously a mix of being capable of your job, having a work-oriented attitude, appearance, and professional presence is also emphasized. So proceeding to work etiquettes. Um, experientially speaking, presenting yourself in the workplace, especially when you're a newbie, is crucial. It is good to set a professional tone for yourself to build new relationship and ensure that you'll have more 
I mean that in, and you have to ensure that you'll have more or less a pleasant experience in the workplace. So these are just some tips that you would want to be aware of, but we also have to understand organizational culture. What we mean to say by organizational culture is that in each organization, there are a specific culture that we have to be aware of and we have to continuously discover as we are working with the organization. So some tips include um, avoid fidgeting, put your phones on silent mode, eat your own food, avoid fillers like saying um and ah, uh, because this actually uh, gives your, um, the one that you're talking to, that you're not quite sure of what you're talking about and you're not confident of what you're talking about. So if there are less fillers, then you would be seen as someone who is capable, as someone who is confident and sure of what they're saying, right? And then you could pay at restaurants. <clears throat> and this was actually, if you're um, present in the um, newly conducted SIMREC last week, um, we are very hospitable with everybody. Uh, we've extended our services, not just professionally, but we had, um, of course, sponsored them um, dinners, two nights, right? That's the, ma the mayor's night and then the congresswoman's night. So that is something that you could um, impart of a culture. So you could be seen as more accommodating and, you know, and more hospitable. Of course, this includes as well respecting others' space and offering to take out of towners around at the end of the um, of the research conference. We had um, another activity that we have conducted with them, and we toured them around Sorsegon. So that is one way of being professional as well. Uh, of course, you have to give a good firm handshake. And last but not the least is show up on time. And this is so simple, but it's we're all struggling to show up on time. Thus, the culture of Filipino time. But, you know, we're aware of this, but we have to really um, work on this one with our own culture. And then... Introduce yourself using your first name and last name. Don't stray out of topic. Focus on the topic that you're trying to um, relay and no others uh, titles. And this means that you shouldn't, you know, it doesn't mean that you should always like address someone as doctor or like this title or that title, but just knowing the fact that that person has this title finding out and discovering, researching about that person is already enough. So you have things to talk about when you entertain them or when you talk to them or when you engage with them and um, address them appropriately in formal occasions. So that's what we mean by no other titles. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> of course, remain professional outside of work, dress appropriately and respect workplace boundaries. <clears throat> so before I <clears throat> proceed <clears throat> to the next slide, as I said a while ago, work etiquettes may vary from one organization to another. And that's why it is good that we have an attitude of being globalized because um, everything that we are doing is growing and so most of the things that are right now today are interrelated with each other. So it is nice to be cultured and have a sense of cultural rel uh, relativity, sensitivity, and awareness. So appearance and professional presence. You're highly aware that uh, as a tourism and hospitality management student and graduate soon, you'll have a little pressure in always keeping up a standard when it comes to your appearance and professional presence because that's actually part of the industry demand and we have to accept, accept that as early as now 
so we could act upon it, right? So the ties of personal hygiene will be discussed next, but I'm not here to be your mother teaching you fundamentals of personal hygiene, but I am your educator, reminding you that these things are the types of personal hygiene that we have to keep up and apply ourselves consistently. So as you can see, toilet hygiene, shower, nail hygiene, teeth, hygiene, hand hygiene, and sickness hygiene. So with the onset of pandemic, sickness hygiene has been prioritized and you as future industry workers must remain vigilant about this for yourself and for your family and guests. Other types of personal hygiene will not be discussed thoroughly because I'm confident that you're already taught already about this and you're applying it in your own lives. What I would like to focus more on is on personal grooming because we have to understand that there is a difference between the two, personal grooming and personal hygiene. Grooming is more on how you look, dress, and present yourself in public. Grooming is an extension of hygiene. So it's going beyond because you have to understand that you will be the face of the organization that you would be working. So you must look presentable and grooming is your best friend here. So starting from bathing, hair care, dental care, um, skin care, makeup and dress, these all say something about you as a professional. I believe in appropriateness. Being appropriate for the work and occasion is always being professional. Example, I'm in the academe um, industry, but my nails are always clean and polished. I see to it that I wear university uniform and appropriately dressing for the occasion, light makeup, fixed hair, um, and many more. So this would impact your overall confidence as, as you know, a personal thing, which would be later translated in your job performance. Believe me. So that wraps up the presentation for module three. Now I'd like to present the midterm project. For your midterm project, you're going to create your own routine. So you have to make your own personal hygiene and grooming schedule and routine, <coughs> excuse me, include the things you do and the things you will do. You can also include the products you use. So you can outline this in um, 8.5 by 13 inches, single page. You're encouraged to get creative with this activity and make the best of it. What's important is it should reflect your personal hygiene and grooming. And this would be the rubric that I would be using to grade your outputs. Now for the midterm examination. It will be a video presentation. You would be creating a two minute long video clip of how you practice your customized personal hygiene and grooming as reflected in activity one. So it should be attuned in, the, in this video presentation. Make sure you practice what you had created in the schedule and routine. The, the video clip should comprise two parts. First part is showcasing how you start the routine until you look professional. So the flow will be completing the routine and preparing how to appear professional and use your corporate attire for the second part. If you don't have any corporate attire, then use any other um, business attires. So the second part showcase yourself expressing why it's important to develop your personal hygiene and grooming. So you could answer this guide question as a tourism and hospitality management student, express why it is important to develop your own personal hygiene and grooming. And this rubric will be used to grade your video presentation. Okay. So in case you have any questions, you could always um, ask me on my messenger, Justin Perez. And I think that's a wrap for module three. I would see you next week. And these are the references.